So please give a round of applause for James Oliver Sr. Thank you, David. Okay, hi everyone. It's a great honor to be here uh, on behalf of Mayo Clinic. So I want to talk to you today about experience design in healthcare. How mapping user journeys allows us to design really helpful products in healthcare. So Mayo Clinic is a nonprofit. We're a nonprofit healthcare organization. We're a worldwide leader in medical care, research, and education for people from all walks of life. So we're a healthcare provider with clinics, hospitals, and care centers across the Americas. Uh, we're US based, but we connect with people from all over the world. The founding Mayo brothers recognize almost bafflingly early in the 1860s that the customer experience uh, is central to a thriving organization. So I kind of think of them as proto experience designers when they coined our central organizational value, the needs of the patient come first. And this was such an amazing thing to say at the time that we, we froze them in carbonite as they were saying it. <laughs> so, from, it, from its founding then, our healthcare professionals have practiced team-based care. That group care, where all the specialists get together uh, to collaborate on the care with the patient, brought us to create a healthcare experience at Mayo Clinic that is really a patient-centered service experience. Today, of course, many of our interactions are digital. We see one million real-world patients a year and about 150 million unique visitors per year, about a billion page views. So chances are most of you in this room uh, have a connection with us through our website. So what I'd like to share with you today is how we create great digital experiences uh, in healthcare. So delight. The Oxford English Dictionary, I looked it up, a high degree of pleasure, joy, or gratification. Well, what does that mean for healthcare? So, we try and support the patient, we try and bring relief from suffering, um, and we try to also bear witness to the events of patients' lives. We try to listen to them. And, and this is how we do our part to bring joy and hope as friends, family, um, healthcare professionals, and even as designers. So in this first section, I want to just talk real quick about user journeys. This is a patient journey map. Um, a patient journey map, and it depicts a patient's movement through different mental states in our digital ecosystem. So it shows that a healthcare system is both episodic and also repetitive. So I'm going to zoom, on, zoom in on this in a second, but I first want to convey the overall looping nature of a healthcare interaction. The main thing to observe is that a user journey is almost never linear. So here's a zoom in on the patient journey map. And a recursive loop that we mark is the additional treatment loop. So once a patient has received a diagnosis, they're in a state, a mental state, of seeking treatment. So let's take a look at an example of how we uh, address that. So a lot of our traffic comes from organic search. You've typed in, let's say, type 2 diabetes into Google, and our article is just there under the NIH and wiki entry. So let's click on that. And here's our article on type 2 diabetes. So to look a little closely at the design, we practice a very utilitarian, clean, modern style in order to present information clearly and not to confuse or mystify the patient. So that's a very intentional thing. Uh, the subtopics are listed in the left navigation, and the short paragraphs are easy to comprehend for our patients. And when we talk about preparing for your appointment, it's important that we don't tell people only how to prepare for an appointment at Mayo Clinic. Uh, we share preparation information for anyone, anywhere in the world to talk to, even their local doctor. So we say, you know, prepare these things, consider these questions, and sometimes we'll put a checklist. And it's all customized for the condition. And the last subsection I want to call attention to here is coping and support. So how are patients and their caregivers going to cope with this condition? What effect is it going to have on their lives, and what can they expect? So from symptoms to support, we structure and present the right knowledge according to the needs of the user, not according to everything that we want to publish, but what is the user looking for? So a journey map is really helpful as you start to design an experience for your own customers as they go through different mental states. So the next section I'll call behavior mapping, and we'll get into a bit more detail. So as a practice, 
we have 20 user experience designers at Mayo Clinic. And experienced designers have emerged to advocate for users and represent really a paramount competitive differentiator now, which is a good experience uh, for your product. So on a multidisciplinary team like we work on, we'll have business or product, content, project, security, visual design, quality assurance um, on a multifunctional team. And at that table, the experienced designer says, empathize with a user and the right design will emerge. So we advocate for the users. So as this is what I call a behavior map, and it's the next level of detail from a user journey. And I'll zoom in on this after. But here along the top of the matrix are the different user states we were just talking about, self-diagnosis, seeking treatment. And they're cross-referenced to four categories of user analysis, goals and motivations, behaviors, questions, and really importantly, emotions. So let's take a closer look. Two behaviors we found patients doing during seeking treatment are consulting friends and family for advice. We've all done this. Uh, so this correlates to the questions the user's holding in the state. What can I expect life to be like going forward? And what have others experienced with this condition? So here already is a wealth of information for us to already start designing with. So to address that question, what have others experienced, we try to connect them with other patients, a direct answer there. So here on a, an article on lung cancer, right in the content channel, we're connecting them with other patients with similar conditions and stories. So share your story takes the user to a place where they can uh, immerse themselves in each other's narratives. We have an interface and a semantic structure to connect relevant patient stories to disease and condition articles. So here are some articles on uh, some pictures and stories relevant to lung cancer. And you can find a story or two that's relevant even to your own condition or that you identify with. Here's some stories from our transplant center. And we also created an area where patients can share their own stories in their own words uh, called Your Stories, and that's unmoderated. So we're talking about gratifying experiences in healthcare, and here's the behavior map again. Now we're looking at the treatment state. So here you can see questions move to, has anyone experienced X with this treatment? And one of the associated behaviors is, I want to read and post to an online community uh, or an online forum. So our designers collaborated with our social media folks and a great vendor to create a digital community where patients can meet other patients with a similar condition, um, engage in active discussions, and share advice and, importantly, hope. So this product is a nice example of one of our seven experience design principles, which is to cultivate community. So this community is a bit like a forum, but focused on the user's context. Um, and patients do post stories. They query each other, share home remedies, talk about particular experiences, both at Mayo Clinic and at other places as well. So here are the categories we set up are around disease and condition groupings. And you can see there's plenty of active discussion in the arthritis and joint conditions area. You can start a discussion or join an active one. And you remember on our behavior map, one of the things the users told us was that they want to read forums and contact organizations for information. So Mayo Clinic does provide news, both our content and content from other sites. Our point of view is we should give the patients as much helpful information as possible. So it's a good example of how we link the insights from the user journey to the behavior map and into live product design. So this section is about keeping it simple at scale. So multi-user or multi-actor design is a reality for a brand or organization that's operating at a global level. Uh, for Mayo Clinic, patients always come first. But as designers, we have to design experiences for many audiences in different places. So here's a view of how we break down the design problem of the multinational communications product, mayoclinic.org. And this is what I call a user ecosystem diagram. The inner ring of circles shows our eight main audiences, from patients to physicians to students. So each group has different needs and goals, and each of these user groups gets a different experience map. So this is actually how we think about a large design problem of design at scale, a 50,000-page website, um, a billion page views. How do we start to design for that? So we actually think about it and structure our projects around um, these different audience groups. That's the heuristic. 
We bring knowledge about, for example, researchers into an experience design document called a persona. It details what we need to know to empathize with and understand our audiences. I bolded a few core tasks on the right. Find experts, know which grants I can apply to, and find which core lab services are helpful to Christine. And this is a really helpful way to work on each of your audiences one at a time. This is our new global navigation structure that's being implemented this season. And we developed this directly from the thinking in those personas and ecosystem maps. So if you look at the main gray bar, we've organized our sections almost one to one against the user groups of that inner circle, patients, consumers, et cetera. Here the research menu is open and you can see it's organized according to the needs of the researcher. So sometimes user needs overlap, and this can be a real opportunity to do something amazing. So both our medical researchers, our scientists, and our patient personas and research told us that they had a user need in common. They both wanted to find out about the latest scientific breakthroughs from the labs at Mayo Clinic, but in patient terms, in everyday terms, please. So to address this as an experience design group, we thought visual narrative would be the most powerful way to communicate a complicated subject, but with an emotional force. So let's check out this video, please. Imagine, no daily dose, no oxygen, no insulin, no more dialysis, no organ failure. At Mayo Clinic, we're teaching the body to heal itself from within. Imagine if you become the answer, cures become what's common. So design can use narrative. We can design narrative as a communications device. This was a pure web comms piece from our global experience design group. We spent a few months working with our scientists, uh, asking them to describe what they do and how it's relevant and useful to patients, and then worked with content and production to get a nice, easy to understand story. Uh, here's another one um, that's about individualized medicine or genome sequencing. Medicine often looks at everyone the same way. Treatments are aimed at the masses, not tailored to the individual. At Mayo Clinic, we're using the human genome to determine your unique genetic profile, revealing the many layers of individual health. Understanding you at a molecular level. With this detail, we can pinpoint problems, personalize treatments, and even prevent diseases before they happen. That was buffering, I think, as it was playing. But uh, you get the idea, and you hear about the narrative and how we try to communicate to patients. So to accompany this, we brought to, to bring the science to a human level, our art directors went out sketching the research centers and doing some photo shoots of the researchers so we could kind of avoid that white medical coat and petri dish approach that's common in medical science. We wanted just something that was nice and easy. Uh, we found some great generative artists who created an algorithm engine to produce these beautiful patterns for our simple wayfinding tiles. Makes looking up an Alzheimer's lab a little bit more delightful, we thought. And to clarify things for users, we also built out a system of interchangeable tiles. So they have a title, a little scoping text, and just the key links. So from a maintenance point of view, these tiles are really easy to move around and add and remove uh, as we see traffic going up and down. And we saw about a 20% permanent um, positive change in traffic here, and great patient feedback as well. Even clinical trials, we focused on a simple search tool with expandable search, just to make it nice and easy for the patients. So all of these things coming together for the medical science experience, the researcher experience, I thought brought that high degree of happiness that we were looking for. 
And the last section here I want to talk about is mobile wellness. So nearly 50% of our traffic now is coming from mobile devices. And I'm sure it's the same for all of you as well. And we're still just starting to understand how mobile is uh, the tidal wave that's, that's changing our delivery mechanisms for the better. So in the last few years, we've been building out a suite of mobile products to address some of the user needs we know about from the experience mapping and the user research. Um, here's a screenshot from the App Store of the Mayo Clinic growing mobile app line. And then here's, uh, for example, our recent pregnancy app, which guides expectant mothers through their journey, giving both helpful hints, relevant content each stage, and some of the other nice tools as well. So this product came about as we realized there was a very focused information exchange happening in our website that we wanted to pull out of a multi-user system and just deliver through an application. That's how we made that decision. Last year, we launched an app for our patients to give them a 360 of their interactions, both online and offline with Mayo Clinic. This is the patient app where, and I'm just showing my own data here, of course, uh, I can see my family doctor, message her privately, privately, and see a history of our communications and the communications with other members of my care team. So if I have an upcoming visit with another doctor or specialist, I can bring along my entire continuity of care documentation. So here I had a consult with a sports med doctor about my knee pain. And the entire attending physician statement is now right here, portable on my phone. And my whole medical history is now also on my phone, as accessible as my email, but securely locked away. So I can see some of my labs and normal ranges. And mobile delivery is really putting my health data into my pocket, and it's driving that uh, access to data. Mayo Clinic doctors have decided to tackle the problem of prevention and wellness, what we call healthy living. And this site launched this morning, uh, healthyliving.mayoclinic.org. Uh, we're opening in 2014 the Mayo Clinic Healthy Living Program. And we created a responsive design for the promotional site, um, which has two views, one for phones and one more magazine-like for the tablet. And we literally looked at magazine covers uh, to drive the tablet design. But designing for mobile first, uh, as Luke Roblevsky tells us, means dealing with the central problem of navigating on a small screen. So in this case, from the very kickoff meeting of the project, we talked about what would the navigation be that, uh, like on a phone to make sure it's super simple and um, just five sections. The whole site is accessible from the menu in the top right. And this was in response to user, uh, user questions that they had. We turned those around for the naming of our labels, our UI labels. So wellness is huge. Everyone is excited about empowered patients. Uh, people with bracelets and activity tracking devices are, tr are finally getting access to their own personal data. Um, 500 companies are making tracking tools. 13,000 health and fitness apps are available. And 21%, according to Pew, are now tracking their health using technology, which is great. Is it? That means that 79% are tracking their health using their minds or pencil and paper. Well, we've been tracking health using scales and measuring sticks and pencil paper for ages. So what's so new about big data? Well, for a totally delightful wellness experience, we have to look at the three factors together. Data collection and aggregation. That's where these bracelets and monitors are starting, but it's not enough. Behavioral science and medical expertise. We have to pair the data with medical expertise, proven methods to change behavior, like we've done at Mayo Clinic. And finally, uh, the third section, you've lost the weight or you've changed your diet, but how are you going to keep it up? So ongoing support from coaches who can train you and your family and your friends all to support you as an individual uh, in your new healthier lifestyle. So for a great experience, all of these have to work together. And all of us, from individuals to healthcare institutions to entrepreneurs making these apps to amateur sports and professional apparel, apparel and fitness groups, all, need of, all of us need to be working together if we want to move the needle on our health. So thank you very much. And I think uh, we're going to move on to get some food. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.